Hey, Mellow Mechanic here. So I got my uh, pedal powered kayak out today and I want to show you kind of version two that I'm working on. And uh, it's going to be an improvement of this. This works pretty good. It does have some drawbacks uh, that I want to address in the second version. But if you haven't seen the video I did on this, check it out right here. I put a link there and uh, uh, it's a pretty cool video shows exactly how this thing works so I don't really get in the detail here um, but uh, anyway this thing is just a lifetime Teton with the seat and a crank that I modified and put that in so now it's pedal powered as opposed to uh, paddle powered. I built this boat a while ago and uh, it does pretty good um, it's kind of big and bulky it does what I need it to do but taking it to the next level I kind of have to start with a clean slate and uh, let me show you what I've I've done here so it's really early in the project here's what I have okay so here's the thought behind it so you notice I have the same seat as that and that's pretty much where the similarities end this right here is going to be a pedal powered catamaran slash hydrofoil is the end goal of that and so i've taken everything i've learned from this and refined it and i'm going to put it kind of towards this project right here and what i mean by that is this was primarily going to be a proof of concept of, of if i could crank these with a propeller on the bottom and see how fast i could go and i can get it going pretty fast um, but I really want to do kind of an efficiency project here. Uh, and that's, that's where this is coming in. So um, this works well, but it does have some drawbacks. There's quite a bit, but a lot of moving parts here. Another thing that I'm not really fond of is the height of my crank here. You can see compared to my seat, it's pretty high. Um, I like it lower. The problem is dropping this down, my heel almost hits the inside of the hull right here. So I really can't go much lower. So that's kind of where, where it needs to be right there. So to fix all of those small issues is we're going to go to this. So what I've done is incorporated a ring and pinion inside here inside the crank so what i'm doing is i've eliminated this chain reduction and i'm going to eliminate all of the bearings and everything down here so this is the exact same gear the ring and the pinion gear uh, from here that i have in here okay so i have the same reduction there but instead of going down i'm going back and there's going to be a drive shaft through the frame here that's going to go out to an out drive in back and that leads me kind of to the shape that it needs to be for the hydrofoil so we use Mellow mechanic juniors hydrofoil here this was actually a, a neat experiment that we did we also did a video on it but i'll look right there for you um, but this is kind of a proof of concept to see if number one we could build a hydrofoil and number two kind of what it what it took to do how big the wings we needed, the weight, the, where this was. Anyway, this is kind of just an experiment. But I'm going to take the information I learned from here and put it in my pedal powered one. So the basic shape's going to be the same. So if you could imagine this frame, the single frame down the center is going to be right down, similar to this. This front guide mechanism, the front wing, is going to come off this mount right here where these four bolts are right there so they're going to come off and then there's going to be a that's what's going to steer it and that's what's going to lift the front off and then the rear wing like this is going to come right off the back of the seat just about here and it's going to have the drive mechanism with a forward facing prop down in the water uh, so it's going to have a similar shape to this but just imagine there's a crank and a, and, a, and a seat right here. But anyway, that's what I have so far. How about we take this front part apart and I'll show you what goes into that because there's a ton of work, ton of engineering that went into this part, which you can't even see. It's all covered up. 
Um, but let's uh, take it in the garage and take a look there. All right, I brought it back into the shop and uh, I, I got this old frame. We'll call it a, a frame. Um, this was actually a piece I made uh, a while ago that had this chair on top of it. I actually made version, we'll call it one, way back when and that didn't work. So we can kind of forget about that, but I'm still gonna use the parts. So the original frame is the same size tubing. So this is two inch by two inch. And I wish I could get locally some thinner stuff uh, but me just being lazy, I just went down to my shop, and this is eighth inch, so it's a little chunky. The same with this. This is eighth inch. I wish it was a little bit thinner, but I'm going to run with it. I did machine some lightning holes in here that go all the way through right here. Um, you know, a little bit lighter, I guess. But right here is where the seat mounts. And so I have these tabs welded on to the bottom of the frame that have three holes in them, front and rear, and a through bolt. And so they go, goes this way. So I can adjust the position forward and aft this way and up and down with those three holes right there. I can even tilt it like that to get my seat exactly where I'm going. So I did like that about this design. Another thing I liked was I have uh, this bearing here, which is a uh, headset bearing off a bike. And I made this this steering and this steering goes underneath the seat and uh, let me box that up for you and show you so here's the uh, steering on the old frame here with the seat uh, i'm currently going to use but you can see how it mounts here with those holes and those holes there but this just went underneath this dead area kind of where your your thighs are and uh, basically it's called a tank steer so as you sit in it grab it like this and it you just basically put your hands down and steer that way so I really like that I might go with that on the uh, on the new design and uh, I'd incorporate some of these uh, lightning balls too but anyway that's how the steering is going to work uh, let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the gearbox okay back up to the gearbox here how nice that rolls really good bearings in it different ones backwards anyway let's go ahead and uh, let's pop these bolts out and we'll take this off and uh, I'll show you what's inside so here's the front of the frame and you can see it's basically just a, a flange here just real simple four bolts um, machined out this hole right here and that is going to accommodate this this is going to be the output and you can see it's a square drive. So again, I've carried over that square drive from the very, very, very first one. This one, I'm gonna use a solid drive shaft instead of that stupid spring thing. And uh, you can see, you turn in there, but we crack this open and there's that same gear. Now it's in a nice gear box. So, should keep it out of the elements and uh, keep the grease inside too. So it runs a little bit better. Uh, let's take this apart. There's actually a lot of work that went into here. And uh, let me show you guys. All right, here we have it all apart here. Now, when I made this piece, what I did is uh, machined the aluminum first, this hole right here, machined this, and then welded it together, and uh, machined this surface and this surface. But I thought the material I had was 6061, but this is something else. See what machined, it got all gummy and gross. Um, it's accurate and it's going to work. Um, I might redo that. Uh, but anyway, this just holds, there's three bearings in there that are held in with those two uh, little button head screws right there. So I ground this piece on my lathe using my little Dremel setup and it uh, came up pretty good. I pressed it uh, on with my press so there's no pin. It's just friction holding that on there. Um, got a little spacer that goes behind there it off the uh, the seals but if you look at uh, the way this is beveled there's a right way and a wrong way to spin this when you put torque on it you don't want it to pull forward 
because the only thing holding it on is this collar right here with the little set screws. What you want to do is you want to have it forced against the bearings there. Uh, and the bearings will act as your thrust bearings there and keep it in place and not pull against that collar and pull it forward. So what I did to alleviate that is this bolt pattern here is symmetrical. So this pinion is right in the center line of this block right here. So I can take this whole assembly and see how the ring gears towards me is I can mount it this way or I can flip the whole thing over, get it shot here and put it on like that so the ring's away. Um, depending on how I mount it is gonna determine which way this spins and which way this, this has the force. Uh, so again, you want that force towards the bearings there. Um, and then speaking of this piece right here, let's go ahead and take this apart and uh, see what's inside. All right, I got it all taken apart and all my pieces laid out here. Um, these cranks are just off a mountain bike, so if I wanted to save some weight, I could put some lighter ones on. I do need to get rid of this spider here to hold on the uh, chain ring we're actually not using on this right there, so I can save weight there too. So that's that's got to be done. But anyway, these pieces right here, I machined these on my rotary table on my bridge board. It was kind of a, a big job to do, um, but they came out really nice. And they are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter what size you use, they're both the same. And uh, what I used, where's my piece going? This piece right here. This is, uh, I don't know if some of you recognize that, but it's a bottom bracket uh, bearing holder for a bicycle. And I used a bottom bracket shell, I used half of it here and the other half here when I made these and what that gave me is the ability to hold this bearing in place and allowed me with the threads to screw this in or out this way and that will locate my big ring gear here in and out and so I can do it to the same size and then squeeze the bearings together to hold it and that's my fine tune. So I can really adjust the interaction between these two, get that gap perfect, you know, within a hour or so. And uh, it really, really, really works well. Uh, what I did is I, I started with a complete tube, complete bottom bracket shell, and welded it kind of like this, you know, like that. Welded it cut it in half and then machined it down here and on the inside here. And uh, so I think that came out pretty good and it, and it works and everything's still square, which I was hoping it would be after welding that. So uh, those came out good. These spacers right here, uh, real simple, but there's a ton of machining that I had to do on these on the rotary table. Again, those are the same, so you can flip them whatever way you want. Um, and then this, the center axle, this is out of the same bottom bracket I used here. The uh, issue I had is the center part was too small for the center of that. I believe that's like 0.72 or something. You know, it's a weird size. So you can see the pictures here. What I had to do is basically spot weld it, grind it, weld it, grind it, weld it, grind it, and just build that center up. Um, I had to spot weld it because I didn't want to get too hot and warp. I wanted it to be, you know, still uh, straight and not have any kind of wiggle in it. And so I just kind of slowly welded it and ground it, slowly welded it. But anyway, that came out pretty good. Again, I, I ground that on my lathe using my Dremel. It came out super accurate. Uh, proud of this part right here. And then the pin goes in there and then that goes Oops, it goes in there. So this being the front crank, kind of uh, primary reduction here, uh, the output is going to be this drive shaft here, which will go through the frame. Now where this is going to go on the back here is going to go to this gear right here. 
And this and this, these two together are the same ratio as that big chain ring on my first setup. It's a uh, two to one. And so this is, I think, a nine tooth BMX sprocket that I found. Uh, this will be underwater on the drive shaft with the prop on it. So it's going to be, you know, underwater there in a big chain. It's going to come up here. So that is my plan. I did make this carrier for it with the two bearings on it. So I got that done. I do need to make a, a case for it. And then something that can go down in the water for the prop. But that's in the future. So anyway, these are all the parts I made. It's a little early in the project because it really doesn't look like anything. It's just a seat on the tube. But I did want to get a video out to kind of start this process and show you guys what, uh, what I've been up to. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful and entertaining. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I do like reading the comments because that makes me feel good that actually somebody's watching these videos. And uh, like always, I appreciate you watching. See you next time.